Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rideshare Hub. How's it going? Here we are today, another beautiful, beautiful, dark and gloomy day out, you know? That's just what I love, just no sun, no vitamin D, just super gloomy. Um, just kidding guys, but welcome back to the video. I just wanted to make this video super short and um, super quick. You know, I just got out of class and I just feel inspired to educate you guys. You know, I'm the student. Uh, but now I'm the teacher. <laughs> just kidding. I just wanted to make this video really quickly on uh, driverless cars. You guys have seen the title. It's what would you ride as a passenger in a driverless car? All right, sorry guys. We had to move locations really quick because they have a tour and they're just too loud, you know? Why do people gotta be so loud? Just, just pipe down. Who am I to talk? I'm a pretty loud one. But anyways, today's video is would you ride as a passenger in a driverless car? This is like you know the next big thing this is where we're kind of moving in that direction autonomous vehicles and uh, I was actually in Las Vegas the other weekend and I took a ride in a driverless car it was a lift I did and yes there were two people in the front seat um, but just to op make sure it was running smoothly but um, but yeah no it was completely driverless and they were they didn't really even do anything and you know if you ask me being honest I, I thought it went super smoothly and actually even better than somebody with a car so uh, driving <laughs> um, so just here are a couple questions and let me know what you guys think in the comments below would you ride in a driverless car what do you think about it um, question number one so is a driverless car safer and you know I have to say I think it would be safer just some basic da data that I pulled up you know I always love data there are 5.25 million car crashes each year. Let that sink in for a second. That's a lot of car crashes. And not to get too dark, but there's 37,000 deaths per year um, due to car crashes. And with driverless cars, there you know that's just that eliminates all of crashes that happen because of distracted driving, drunk driving. Uh, people who fall asleep during driving and people who text and drive. Did you know that people who text and drive are 24 times more likely to get into a car crash? I don't know. I'm these this is just some basic stuff that I'm thinking about. You know, people are asking me, "Oh, what do you think are driverless cars coming?" And I don't know. Like, of course there's regulations and stuff, but sorry, I got cut off again. People are just too loud. But is are driverless cars safer? What do you guys think? I think that it would just eliminate all of the, you know, crashes that happen due to people that are distracted. And yeah, sure, there might be, you know, here and there crashes that happen with driverless cars. You know, mistakes do happen in software and stuff, but it would be way less than anything that happens today. Like I said, 5 million crashes a year. That could probably go down to like 5,000 crashes per year if all cars are driverless. Um, and it does raise a very ethical question. You know, how, who is going to be the regulator of the, you know, the choices that the driverless car makes? Say that's, I don't know, a passenger, uh, a pedestrian runs out in the middle of the, of the road and the driverless car has a choice. Should it, you know, hit the person or should it swerve out of the way and hit another person? Like, these are the kinds of ethical questions that, um, you know, are raised. And I think there's like an old philosophical quote or a story that, you know, if you're, if some people are walking on a train tracks and the train is going to hit that person and there's five people there and they're on the wrong side of the tracks, should you change tracks to hit, say there's a one person on there and there, that's the train tracks that shouldn't the train shouldn't be going would you switch it to save those five people to kill the other person um, but yeah I don't know that's just sort the sort of things I'm thinking of um, another thing is it more sustainable yes this is because they are going to be electric cars of course and they're not going to be made from motors so you know there will be no um, carbon dioxide produced going into the atmosphere and um, you know global warming climate change all that stuff um, what else is it cheaper 
I think so. I think it's more cost effective. That goes the same along with electricity. And you don't need to um, pay for drivers. You know, you don't need, drivers won't even need a driver's license. Um, the cost of a ride will be going down and down. And the last question is, is it realistic? You know, Lyft said, uh, I believe it was the CEO of Lyft or one of the Lyft's engineers at 20, in 2016, they said, and I heard this uh, firsthand, I was there when they, she said it, that by 2021, all of Lyft's cars will be driverless. So it is currently 2019, so that's like another two years. And um, they're already making serious, you know, uh, steps to, to make that. Like I said, in Vegas, they already have driverless cars. But I don't know exactly how long it will take with government and stuff like that. So let me know what you guys think. Like I said, just wanted to spark this conversation. And I'm no expert on driverless cars. Um, you know, I don't know how to engineer a driverless car. So I don't really even know how it works. <laughs> I just, you know, wanted to ask you guys, what do you guys think? Um, obviously, there's a bunch of mixed reviews, lots of controversies. Some people love it. Some people completely hate it, say no, never. Oh, and I just wanted to close on one little thought. This is just what I think. I think that, let's say in 20, 30 years, when driverless cars are normal, um, say our grandchildren. I think our grandchildren will actually, will actually have conversations and they'll be like, wait, when you were young, people actually drove cars? They could be like, that's insane. Like, why would you put a person behind a car? You know, these are 3,000, 4,000 pound machines that, you know, there's no regulations right now. If a person wants to, they can drive 120 miles per hour, crash and injure somebody. You know, if, if you have a driverless car, you can put, let's say, a limit that the car can only drive 65 miles per hour and everyone's driving at a safe speed rather than, oh, so let me just speed through this light um, and possibly injure somebody or get behind of a wheel drunk driving. These, these regulations, there, there's really, I mean, yeah, sure there's policemen, but they can't stop somebody from going 120. They can just give them a ticket and try to prevent them from doing it again. But uh, yeah, I just think that possibly in the future, the kids will just be like, wow, what? There used to be people who drove behind cars. Um, but anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Again, this is just a quick video, I'm trying to do daily uploads now, um, six days a week, except for, except for Saturdays, because you know Saturdays are busy days for Uber and Lyft drivers. And, um, you know, I don't want to distract you guys from making that sweet money, sweet moolah. So anyways, guys, this video, again, is sponsored by Proof Coffee. They did pay me $10,000 to shout them out in this video. So once again, guys, talk to you all soon. Have a great day. And remember to subscribe, like, comment, hashtag, post to all of your friends. Uh, forward this link in all of your emails for the next 10 years. And just kidding, guys. But seriously. You guys are great. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.